In this video, we're going to look at another application of double integrals. We want to calculate the surface area of a function of two variables. So the idea is we have a surface z equals f of x comma y. And we have a region in the xy plane. And in this case, we're just going to look at our rectangle. It's the simplest case to derive the formula. And we're going to say, OK, what is the uh, portion of the surface above that region, above that rectangle? We'd like to calculate the area of that portion. So we go ahead and divide up the rectangle in the xy plane into a grid. So we're going to partition the interval a, b into uh, n equal uh, parts. And the partition will partition the interval c, d into m equal parts, just like we did before. Then we're going to look at just one point. So with coordinates x, i, y, j, Look at that point P on the surface corresponding to that. And we're going to calculate its tangent plane. Why? Because we're going to use that tangent plane approximation to help us get an estimate for the area of this grid cell right here on the surface. So the equation of this tangent line at point P uh, is just the standard equation here. Remember how we found its normal vector. We said that the uh, tangent vector along one direction is 1, 0, partial derivative of f with respect to x. And the tangent vector in the other direction is so in the j direction is 0, 1, partial of f with respect to y. We took that cross product, and that gave us our normal vector. So since we're only interested in an estimate for the portion of this small cell, and we know that the down on the xy plane, the distance across the cell is delta x and delta y, what I'm going to do is take this tangent vector and scale it by delta x. And that's what I'm going to call as v sub x. And I'll do something likewise with the tangent vector in the j direction. I'll scale that by delta y. And so the area of this parallelogram, which is determined by the vectors v sub x and v sub y would be an estimate for the area of this patch on the surface. So how would I calculate that? Well, the magnitude of the cross product is the area determined by those two vectors. But those two vectors are just uh, scale factors, delta x times the one tangent vector delta y times the other tangent vector, their cross product is the normal vector. So it would just be delta x times delta y times the magnitude of the normal vector. And the magnitude of the normal vector, we can calculate, you know, its components. And so that would be radical f sub x squared plus f sub y squared plus 1. And we multiply that times delta x delta y. That would be an estimate for the area of the ij cell of this surface. Now, we know that if we let the number of cells go to infinity, then the delta x delta y goes to dA. And so we could get an estimate of the surface area by adding up all of these patch estimates. And again, as the number of cells goes to infinity, then 
this is going to go to become an integral. And I forgot my dA, very important there. The integrand is going to be the radical of f sub x squared plus f sub y squared plus 1. So here we have our formula for the surface area. And that should actually remind us of something. It really looks like a two-dimensional analog to the, our arc length formula. In our arc length formula, we just said that the length of the arc is the integral from A to B. And the integrand was the radical of dy dx squared plus 1 dx. So here we have two dimensions. So I have a partial with respect to x squared and then the partial with respect to y squared plus 1, the radical of that. So very similar. Let's look at some examples. Our first example, we're going to calculate the area of the part of the plane with the equation 6x plus 4y plus 2z equals 1 above the rectangle uh, 1 comma 3 by 3 comma 5. Uh, and so remember this means x is going between 1 and 3 and y is going between 3 and 5. So um, we can solve for z and then from there we can uh, take the partials. So partial of Remember, z sub x is the same as f sub x, so z sub x will be negative 3, z sub y is negative 2. So we've just got constants for the partial derivatives. So what will be our surface area? Well, we can uh, evaluate this order. It's a rectangle in, in any way. It really doesn't matter. I did dy dx, so let me just make sure dy. Uh, is my inside integral, so this should be the bounds for y, and the outer integrals dx, those are the bounds for x. And so I have 1 plus z sub x squared plus z sub y squared, that'll just be a constant. So I have 1 plus 9 plus 4, that'll be radical 14. I'm going to bring that out in front, and what's left over here? Well, this is my integrand, and now it's just one. So this just represents the area of that rectangle. And that's just going to be two units by two units, so four units. So four times radical 14 is the area of the part of the plane above that rectangle. In our next example, we have a sphere, and we're going to cut the sphere with the plane z equals 1, and we're only going to be interested in calculating the surface area of the sphere, which is above that plane. All right. Well, first thing we need to know to be able to determine uh, the region in the xy plane is what is the uh, intersection here. So I'm just going to replace z with 1. I'll get x squared plus y squared plus 1 equals 4, which means I have the circle x squared plus y squared equals 3. z equals 1 is my curve of intersection. So I just want the corresponding disk in the xy plane. And that's going to be my region d. Now, we need to find that integrand, and so I'm going to suggest a different, slightly different technique to be able to find radical 1 plus z sub x squared plus z sub y squared. Instead of solving for z, I'm going to start with our equation. I'm going to solve for z squared, and I'm going to use implicit partial differentiation with respect to x first, and that's going to give me an expression with x and z, which doesn't seem like I'm going in the right direction, but bear with me. If I do the same thing with the partial, implicit partial differentiation with respect to y, I'll find that 
partial of z with respect to y is y over z. And then my integrand would be, well, radical x squared over z squared plus y squared over z squared plus 1, but 1 is the same as z squared over z squared. So I've got a common denominator. Let me do some algebra, write it as a single fraction. I know that radical z squared is just going to give me z. And what do I know about x squared plus y squared plus z squared? Well, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is 4. So now in the numerator, I just have radical 4. So now I just have 2 over z. And finally, once I get to this simplest form, I'll replace z with radical 4 minus x squared minus y squared, which I get from the equation of the sphere. And that's going to be my integrand. So I would take the double integral over that disk d for uh, of that integrand. Now, it's a disk with a radius radical 3. And I have an integrand that looks like it would be easy to evaluate using polar coordinates. So that's what I'm going to do. My disk uh, here is just a polar rectangle. And when I convert the integrand, I get something simple as well. Now, it's not uh, as nice as some of the other uh, integrals we've done with polar coordinates. I do make, need to make a u substitution. So I'm going to let u equal 4 minus r squared. So du is minus 2r dr. But since I have the r dr, up here in the integral. That's not too bad. And then I'll go ahead and convert the bounds here. When r equals 0, u will equal 4. And when r equals radical 3, u equals 1. So by converting to u, I get uh, bounds that are integers. All right, so uh, writing the integral in terms of u, I have the negative 1 half after I solve for r dr, so negative 1 half du, and that's u to the negative 1 half. So let's find the antiderivative. So that would be uh, 2 u to the 1 half. I'm going to bring this 1 half out in front. Uh, how did this 1 half become positive? Well, I changed the bounds. I just interchanged them. Instead of going from 4 to 1, I said let's go from 1 to 4. Remember, all that does is change the sign. So now I've got a positive number. I've got bounds, uh, which I'm used to having the lower bound smaller than the upper bound. And so evaluating that, I get 2 pi.